Good morning and happy Monday. Welcome to week four of online learning. This is a very special week because this week is Holy Week. So we will be doing a lot of activities around Holy Thursday, Good Friday, and all of the events leading up to the last few days of Jesus's life, all the way up to Easter. So get ready. I'll see you on Zoom today. Bye. Good morning and welcome to math. You will need your new math checklist and packet as well as your workbook. This week we are continuing on data and graphing. So last week, let's just do a quick little review about what we did last week. So we did pictographs where we are showing information. We, first we started with tallies because that's how we collect data, but we were showing it with pictures. So a pictograph is a picture graph and you were drawing your own and then reading some more graphs. If you had time, there were some extra graphs here. Then on Friday, we did bar graphs where we're showing information using rectangular bars. Sometimes they go up, sometimes they go sideways. So again, some more bar graphs that you guys were practicing. Now, the third one we are doing is called a line plot, which is very similar to what it sounds. It is a line. So um, I'm going to read through some of this. It says, like a vertical bar graph, which would be this vertical means up and down. Here's a bar graph. A line plot shows information vertically. So a line plot is going to have information going up. The base is just that, a line, where we can place numbers or sometimes words. Unlike a bar graph, the line doesn't have a vertical square. So here, a bar graph has like two, four, six. A line plot does not have that. Above each number or word at the base, we plot X's. So we're actually gonna, instead of boxes, we're gonna put X's like this. And that would be a line plot. So. Let's make a line plot together. We'll plot the number of chores Paula did last week. So Sunday, Thursday, so Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So on Sunday, Thursday, Saturday, she did four. So Sunday, four, Thursday, four, Saturday, four. On Monday through Wednesday, she did two. So Monday was two, Tuesday was two, Wednesday was two. On Friday, she did none. So we're gonna, I'm gonna keep reading through these steps to show us how we would create a line plot. So number one, make a line along the bottom of the page, but leave room for words below. So I'm not gonna, go, I'm gonna, I'm gonna draw a line, but I'm gonna leave a little bit of space below, but I'm still towards the bottom. Because remember, our information has to go up. Number two, write the days of the week under the line. So remember how up here on bar graphs we would write, like if it was favorite ice cream, this would be like mint, this would be chocolate, this would be vanilla. We're doing that same thing under the line here. So we've got Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. But as it said, we do not have a vertical line. We're not doing a scale up the side. Number three, for each chore Paula completed, put one X above that day. So for Sunday, she did four chores. So I'm going to put four X's. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to continue on. Monday she did two, and so on and so forth. So I would like you to continue to fill out the information for the rest of Paula's chore week. Okay, let's do some more practice on the back. Okay, Armando was curious to know how much his classmates read at home each week. So he conducted a survey of the number of books each classmate read in a week. And this is display each set of data in a line plot. So if you don't think you have room in the spaces, go ahead and get a separate piece of paper. 
Um, or you could even do it on the back of the checklist here. You could just flip it over right here. That would be fine too. So this one's a little bit tricky because we've got some numbers here instead. So we wanna know how many books they read at home. Did they read one book, two books? So you're thinking, what information am I gathering? I'm not, I'm not gathering the people, I'm gathering how many books they read. So my line plot's gonna look like this. I'm gonna draw my line and I'm gonna give it a title, books read. How many books did they read? And I could write per week. And I see numbers all the way up to nine. So I'm just gonna do a scale of one to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'm gonna say, Jose reads three books. So I'm gonna put one X for Jose. Anna reads seven books. One X for seven for Anna. Carmen reads four. One X for four. Danny reads six. Put an X for Danny. And then you're gonna fill out the rest of the information. Now this one, I think you can figure this one out. Colin had a good tomato crop this year. He kept track of how many tomatoes he picked each day for a week. So remember, here's your plot. Give it a title. Tomatoes picked. And your, I would put the days at the bottom and then tallies, how many? So on Monday, I would do five X's, Tuesday, seven X's, Wednesday, 12. And then you're gonna do three all on your own. If you finish that and you would still like some extra practice, have a little bit of extra time in your packet, the next thing says line plot practice. So I'm gonna open. There it is, line plot practice. And there are, there are three sets of data here where you are going to plot. And here are some, I already drew the lines there for you. So Sophie went to a garage sale and saw some pots, mugs, skateboards, and baskets. Make a line plot of the items she saw. So pots, mugs, baskets, skateboards. Pots, mugs, skateboards, and baskets. There are extra lines. You Obviously, you don't need those ones, but use as many as you need. X's for as many as they were seen. But then it has extra questions. How many more pots than skateboards did she see? Remember, that's a subtraction problem. Which item had the most frequency seen? Which just means which one was seen the most. Okay, and then some extra questions here. Good luck. Today is journal writing in your Lenten journal. This is the last week we'll be doing this because Lent ends at the end of this week because on Sunday is Easter. So today we're actually going to do two journal entries, but they are um, sh a little shorter. So the first one is create a list of five different blessings you are thankful for. So that's a pretty simple one. You're just gonna create a list of five. I'm gonna start down here just because my marker bled through. So one, two, three, four, five. What am I thankful for? Number one, I'm thankful for my health and my family's health. What else am I thankful for? Time with Cece, watching her grow. Notice that I could have just writ, wrote, um, number one, I could have wrote health. Number two, I could have written Cece, but I chose to write in detail what I am thankful for. I would like you to try to write more than just one word. See if you can fill up that line because we are in third grade now and we know how to write in detail. We've been practicing. So this is the first one. And then the second one says, write a letter of forgiveness in your journal. Perhaps you need to forgive someone who hurt you or maybe you need to accept the forgiveness of another. Write it out in detail. So this one's a little bit trickier because you need to think about a time 
that maybe you did something that was not very kind, or maybe you, uh, maybe mom and dad asked you to do the dishes and you said that you were too busy or that you didn't want to help, or maybe you got frustrated about having to do all the schoolwork when you want to go play outside. So you are writing a letter of forgiveness where you are forgiving someone for something that they did to you. Maybe someone hurt you. So you were writing a letter saying, I forgive you. Or you are writing to someone else saying, I am sorry, please forgive me. Okay. So you have two options. I forgive you plus some other details or please forgive me. I am sorry. So one of those two options. So this one might take a little bit of thinking, but I know you can do it. Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to reading this week. You're going to need your spelling packet, or at least this in your reader's notebook. Um, the checklist packet here, this kind of tells you what you need to do today. And then you will need your book later on to preview the topic. So our spelling this week is changing Y to I and adding ES. So all of our words this week, they either add, they end in ED or they end in E. S. And the reason they do that is because all of them used to end in a Y, which has been changed to an I E S, or Y changed to an I E D. Let me give you an example. So um, your word may have been puppy, but this week is not puppy, it is puppies. So the Y has been changed to an I and add ES. Or I sent my mom a card and she replied. So the word was reply and we changed Y to an I and added ED. So all of your words this week ended in ES or an ED because it used to be a Y, which is um, when they changed the endings. Y to I and added ES or ED. So you don't have to do any of the changing, but that's where all your work came from. So if I look at my checklist here, I'm doing pages 106 and 112 for spelling. I'm going to turn to 106, and you are organizing your words by words that end in ES and words that end in ED. So I'm going to go down the list. First word is cities. I see it ends in ES. I'm going to put it over here. Please make sure you are spelling it correctly because it's right here. Make sure that when you are practicing your spelling, you are always practicing it correctly. And then you've got two more spelling pages. Then today, you are also going to preview the topic and do your journal time. So today's just spelling and journal. So you're going to open your book to page 237. And we are learning about animal migration. So it says geese fly in a V shape high in the sky. Hundreds of monarch butterflies gather on a tree trunk to rest during their long flight to Mexico. Sea turtles gather on Florida beaches in the spring and summer. These are just a few examples of migrations made every year. And migration is the movement of insects, animals, or even people from one location to another, often thousands of miles apart. In The Journey, Stories of Migration, you'll learn why two very different creatures, gray whales and locusts, migrate and where they go. So we're learning about animal migration. Sounds like it's going to be a nonfiction story telling facts about animals 
And so I'm gonna open my journal and I'm going to write, what do you know about animal migration? So you can even use some of the information they said right here, like sea turtles on Florida beaches. A lot of us know that birds fly south in the winter. What animals do you know that migrate? Where do they migrate? Where would you like to migrate? Maybe the summer's too hot, the winter's too cold. Maybe you'd rather be on a beach or somewhere really icy and snowy. Where would you like to go? Write your thoughts.